Hi, my name is Doug, and welcome to Emerald Hill Skies. Tonight we're going to do a, a little thing that we call a skylet, an Emerald Hill Skies skylet, which is a little bit different than what we normally do. We normally do live streams where we're actively observing, so it's applied astronomy. And we use electronically assisted astronomy, so you're able to view uh, through the telescope with us real time. I just want to show you real quickly what that's like. We have this observatory, a telestation, a PureTech Telestation 2, with that Rasa 11 telescope. It's an 11-inch scope. And on the business end of that is the ZWO ASI 2600 MC Pro color astro camera. And what this permits us to do is show you uh, the sky real time. And in this picture, uh, what, over there, uh, that's a live picture of the scope. It looks like it's broad daylight, doesn't it? But it's 96% moon as of tonight when we're recording this video. And uh, it's got the whole night lit up, especially in a night vision security camera, which is what we're seeing the the telescope in right there. Now that picture you see below me there, that's how bright the moon is, 96%. And you can see we're aimed pretty much at it. Let's go to the um, <clears throat> planetarium software, and here you can see the moon right in our field of view. Right here is the telescope's, the RASA's specific field of view. Keep in mind we're up over the south southwest, so we're just past the meridian, pretty high up in the sky, south southwest. We're aimed right here, and let's zoom in on this part of the sky. There we go. Now the red rectangle, the red rectangle you see there, is the approximate field of view of our Rasa telescope, and the telescope's, uh, if you can see, it's kind of kicked upside down, looking almost straight up toward the zenith almost. So um, the angle we are, th this would be down. And that's up on the scope. And uh, it's kind of hard to get that orientation. But <clears throat> when we zoom in on this field of view, um, you can tell which end is down, because see that print up there? That shows you the orientation of the scope. So that's the upper left top side of the scope. That's going to be important in a second. Now in the center of the field of view, we've got this asteroid, Vesta. <clears throat> and we wanted to pick an asteroid because of a, of a weakness in SharpCap's uh, deep sky image annotation. And it's not a weakness, per se, because Robin Glover does a great job in SharpCap. It's just that he cannot possibly list every object in the sky. And so he, what he does is he lists the main objects that are deep sky objects. Well, that doesn't help us with Vesta because it's in our solar system. And this raised a problem with me the other night. I was trying to find Vesta, and I was having a horrible time. I was acting like human plate solving, trying to look at the shapes of the stars and pick out where there might be this wanderer, in other words, Vesta, this asteroid, wandering among the stars. I was having a horrible time. And a friend of mine who watches sometimes the videos of uh, these Emerald Hill Skies live streams, he picked up on it. He, he got an idea. He knew that in Stellarium there was some basic scripting, elemental scripting language. So what he did was he use the scripting box, here you can look at it with F12, and he invented this script in Stellarium. And what I'll do is put it, I would put it in the description, but I don't think YouTube likes it when you put code like this in the description. I think it, it basically doesn't allow you to save it. I think they're afraid that you'll try to do something uh, with their programming. So I'll have to put the code on the Emerald Hill Skies website. Give me a day or two after this recording is up, and I'll have that on the Emerald Hill Skies website. And I'll put the link to it in the description. So that way you'll be able to jump right to it in the resources tab, maybe. And what you can do is 
copy to your clipboard that code, and then come to your script console by hitting F12, and hit the script tab and insert that code in. So what this allows you to do is to pick an object. Now, right now you can see up here in the upper left, it just says that I've got a random star picked, but I'm gonna pick Vesta again. Now you can see it says Vesta. Now once the object is on Vesta or whatever object it is you're trying to, to see in SharpCap and your, in your imaging program, SharpCap, whatever object you're trying to see, once you get it highlighted, go back to your script tab and click this little right arrow. Let me make sure that it's in the field of view here. Click that right arrow up here. It looks like a play button on the VCR, and it says run script when you hover over it. Now when you do that, it gives you some output, and the line that you want is this line in the middle. And I just have to say that uh, Pete, Pete to me is kind of a genius to have thought this up. So we will put a link to his live streams so you can go watch what he does in his videos. He does electronically assisted astronomy just like we do here, except he's smarter and does computer programming. But this really helps. Now we're going to copy that to the clipboard and notice it ends in 5739. Now I've got a little uh, utility that I've used here for some time, 5739, and it lets me see my, my clipboard items. It's called Clipmate. There's nothing special about it except it does let you see a series of clipboard items, but that way I can make sure I did copy it to the clipboard because sometimes I've noticed with my laptop, I can hit Control C and it doesn't copy it the first time. You can also go to Output and you can see all the different times you've copied it to clipboard and maybe make sure you're getting the last one copied to your clipboard. Test it, maybe paste it into a Word document or a notepad or something and make sure you're pasting in the right one. Now, when you go to SharpCap, uh, this is our live view of SharpCap now. Um, look at the moon here, starting to intrude here. Um, if you go up to Tools and click on Deep Sky Image Annotation, now if you pick an object like one of the Messier objects or one of the well-known MGC objects from the Caldwell catalog or whatever, Herschel 400, those are going to be in here. But see, Vesta is not. But when you turn this on now, you'll see I've been working on this, and these are the times I've been plotting Vesta. But imagine this would have been empty, so you don't get any guidance at all on something like Vesta. So now I'm going to bring this little box that SharpCap produces and there's this little, little button down at the bottom called Paste Custom Object Info. And that takes whatever is in your clipboard and creates a line for it. There it showed up. Now I'm going to click on that line. And what it does is it creates a crosshair for it. So here, a while ago, I did this one and it created that crosshair, and then now I did this one, so it created that crosshair. So you can see how much the asteroid has moved just in the roughly, I don't know, 30 minutes that I've been learning how to do this, thanks to Pete's code. These crosshairs would not have been here with Deep Sky Image Annotation had it not been for Pete's code. So now you look on this, uh, I'm gonna take the, um, I'm going to take the deep sky image annotation off, but kind of try to remember where it is. It's right around in here, and you can see that gives you an approximate location. But now, I got to say, it's never going to be exact because, you know, it's not an exact science between Stellarium and the real sky. And I've, I've tuned this, you know, by using plate solving, so it's synchronized with the sky and all, but it's never exact. But it's going to be in this area somewhere. Now, to, now that you're in the right area and you know that you've got Vesta close by, 
Now you can start live stacking. So what I've done is I've clicked on live stack up here. You notice I've got Vesta in the name. And I've been live stacking for about 35 minutes. But I'll tell you what, after around 18 minutes with Vesta, I knew I had it nailed in this frame. In spite of the fact that when you look, you wonder which one of these stars is Vesta. But I'll tell you how I knew. Plate solving will get you close. And then, I mean, uh, yeah, using this new code that Pete has enabled us to use has gotten us close. But now start live stacking. And now let's zoom in. Uh, this is 50%. Uh, Are you seeing it already? It's like a little comet tail. Here is 70%. And now this is 100% of my optical zoom. Look at how this asteroid movement is now tracked using live stacking. So you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you are seeing Vesta or whatever asteroid or minor planet or really whatever you wanted to track. In fact, you can go over to Stellarium and Pete taught me you can create a mark. Like you could say, I want to be in the middle of this little ring of stars. And I'm going to try to find that ring of stars. So you can put your cursor somewhere where you want it to be and hold down the shift button. And if you hold down shift, then when you click it, that creates a marker. And when you click on that marker, let me zoom in a little bit. When you click on that marker, well, just trying to get the marker to be highlighted. Huh. It's not letting me click on it, is it? How close do I have to be before it'll let me select it? Well, that's not very successful, is it? Um, let's try another one here. Let's let's. Um, Shift click again. There we go. For some reason, it wasn't doing a while ago. Now I'm going to hit the space bar and that'll center it just so it won't be moving around. Now, with that marker centered and with the labeled up there in the upper left, now you can go back to your script and you can hit the play button again. And now, when you copy over this and copy that to your clipboard. Now I'm going to bring up my clipboard and make sure I got the marker. Sure enough, I did. Now if I went back to SharpCap and I brought up, I don't know if we happen to still be in the field of view. Probably not because the sky was moving pretty quickly. Let's bring deep sky image annotation up again. And I'm probably out of the field of view. But when I click this, paste custom object info, paste custom object info. Oh, it's not in the field of view. So it's not, it's not going to allow me to show it. But if you have it in the field of view, the approximate field of view where you are, it'll help you zero in on it. Um, let me do that again so that you kind of see what I mean. Let's go back here and let's search again for Vesta. So I'm going to go F3 and put in Vesta. Let's find Vesta again. Okay. Now with Vesta, let me go out and see my... Okay, so I'm in the field of view. And let's say I want to be right between these two bright stars. So I'm going to hold Shift key down and put another marker in. So there's marker four. And you see it's highlighted upper left. Now with it highlighted, I'm going to go to script, 
and hit the play button and it gave me this new output code. I want the middle line. You're just barely seeing that, aren't you? Because it's covered up by the scope view, the scope cam. Now I'm going to copy that to the clipboard. I'm going to look at my clipboard and make sure I got it. Marker 4, sure. Now I'm going to go back to SharpCap and click um, Paste Custom Object Info. And there's Marker 4. So it, it helped me find where Marker 4 would be in this field of view. It's a very handy it's a very handy concept if you stop and think about it. Now you can find anything, anything you want to find, and it places it approximately in your field of view. Now it's gonna get it's gonna get a little bit hard because look, it had Vesta here, and you recall the object that's actually moving like an asteroid is actually right here. You can if I zoom in way on it, now I'm at 240. I'm into the optical zoom, but see how Vesta has moved. So that's how close it got us. Bringing that uh, uh, clipboard of information from Stellarium. I think it's a very healthy, uh, very not healthy, very very helpful concept, and it's something that I'll use again and again and again. It keeps me from having to do the big scale human plate solving, and now I can see within just a very small part of my field of view, I can see where I am. So thanks to Pete Gallup, and we'll uh, put his, uh, his link to his website, I mean to his YouTube channel in the description below. Thanks for taking part in this little uh, Emerald Hill Sky Skylet, uh, where we're learning to grab clipboard of information from Stellarium and paste it into a sharp cap to be able to locate objects to a pretty close uh, detail. And just to let you know how close that is, from marker four, I use a little angle here, angular measurement, from marker four to Vesta is seven arc minutes. And in sharp cap, um, this is seven arc minutes. So it gets you within easily a very small distance of your, your object that you're wanting to see. And I'm happy to be able to record Vesta now and see this asteroid zooming across our solar system. And I hope you'll be able to have some fun like this too. God bless, have a good night, and good night from Emerald Hill Skies.